They first uh, noticed to me that there would be a coronation. Came while I was uh, sitting at the desk at the Democratic National Convention in the summer of 1952. A brief story came through the wires that the King of England, uh, George VI, had died, and his daughter Elizabeth, who was in uh, Kenya at the time, uh, with her husband, uh, automatically became the next queen, and the coronation would be later. It was a, a difficult thing to plan for because uh, there was no way of transporting a television signal across the Atlantic Ocean. The television signal was so limited to about 65, 70 miles, uh, except if it could go by uh, microwave uh, relay or by coaxial cable. And of course, you couldn't put microwave relays across the Atlantic, and there was no coaxial cable that could be laid there. Uh, I went to Bill Lodge, our uh, director of engineering and engineering research, and asked what he thought, and he said that there's virtually no chance whatsoever that you can get it across anyway except on film. He said it's just uh, impossible to count on. I said, how about the AP and T cable? It's going to be laid uh, and effective on January 53. He said, it's great. It will carry your signal for you. It will carry it one frame at a time, which means that uh, if you have 100,000 frames, you can send a frame in it. You can uh, take the film apart in London, send it frame by frame, reorganize it in New York, and it'll probably take much more time than a slow freighter to get it across. Well, but Bill was interested in trying to work out something. I went to London in December of 1952 to have some conversations with BBC and some other persons there and came up with the conclusion that the best thing we could do would be uh, to do television recording, kinescope, we call it. According to Bill Lodge, it would be almost impossible to use the kinescope of the British system, but he said he thought he could find a way of overcoming it. He went to an American manufacturer, had his people in uh, general engineering at CBS design a system to make all the necessary uh, uh, changes that were required and send the equipment to London all set to make the modifications. Uh, he went to work on it, had the equipment ready to ship by roughly the 1st of July. So we took space uh, at London Airport in an old building that was uh, formerly a weather station at the London Airport. And uh, three of his people from General Engineering and the machinery and a couple of engineers from the manufacturer left for London to uh, set up the equipment at that old weather station. So we were on the way, we seemed to be in business. And uh, they tested at the equipment enough to assume it would work. Well, this worked very well. Uh, we decided to uh, take a, a crew over to London to edit the 35 millimeter film in a plane on the way back. So we uh, uh, chartered a Boeing uh, Stratocruiser so that we'd have only an hour uh, by the time the coronation was over. In that hour, we could ship. Uh, the, the CBC had arranged by the Canadian Air Force to make a jet plane available to leave around noon to carry the stuff to Goose Bay. And then we could either ship our material from Goose Bay down to uh, Boston, Logan Airport, 
or we could take the CBC signal, uh, which would be uh, sent to Toronto. Well, we decided to uh, try to find a way to get fast transportation from Goose Bay to Boston. Uh, fortunately, uh, we had an affiliate in Galveston, Texas, named J Jimmy Stewart. And Jimmy Stewart had the fastest plane in the country. It was a World War uh, uh, P-57. P oh, P-51, probably. P-51. Yeah. That had been uh, 4751. Right. <laughs> 51 it was. And he'd uh, had that uh, reconstructed for high speed maneuvers. And he had uh, a private pilot who'd been doing all this flying for him. So we got uh, Jimmy Stewart's plane and his pilot and arranged to have them at Goose Bay to pick up the film when it came in from London. Then uh, that was going all very well, but a couple days before the coronation, we got word that uh, NBC had made a deal with the uh, Venezuelan Air Force. The Venezuelan Air Force had uh, bought a plane uh, from uh, British manufacturers, a jet, and they were going to take delivery of it on June 3rd, uh, 1953. It would go, uh, at the time the coronation was over, would take the NBC film, drop it off in New York, and then go on to Venezuela. Uh, this, of course, would absolutely crush us. It looked as if we might be defeated. Uh, on the coronation day, we uh, finished up everything at 12 o'clock noon London time, which of course gave us a six hour span over New York at that time of the year, and means that uh, we could get uh, our material on the uh, CBC plane, Canadian Royal Air Force plane into Boston in time to show it before five o'clock in the afternoon. We had a commercial based on the fact that we were going to be first. We uh, were set up at uh, London Airport. Walter came out to uh, do the uh, whatever was necessary with respect to the play-by-play. -play. And he also uh, ran his own equipment uh, I stood in the room and watched our film editors who were working there and also watched the uh, equipment work on the making the conversion from the BBC film to the picture that we would deliver. Uh, we got our uh, other film, the 35 millimeter, onto the uh, BOAC plane which parked right in front of the building uh, where we were doing the recording. At one o'clock, we were all aboard and took off. About three hours out, getting close to mid-Atlantic, uh, the captain of the flight came back and said he thought it was about time to have a champagne uh, in honor of the new Queen of England. So he brought a champagne bottle and glasses. And while we were drinking the toast to the queen, uh, another member of the staff came up and handed me a piece of paper. It was a cable, signed Walter. And the first line in the cable, in effect, said that uh, the Venezuelan Air Force plane had had oil trouble before mid-Atlantic and it turned around. The plane carrying our and NBC's material and and uh, CB, CBC's had no trouble and it was on its way and was expected to make it. Well, this took a tremendous pressure off because now uh, we had a chance if our uh, Jimmy Stewart plane flown by uh, uh, Apollo 
I could get off from uh, Goose Bay in time to make the flight to Boston. And this was a faster plane, so we were pretty confident at that point. So uh, we had another glass of champagne and uh, celebrated that we may win. We got to Boston Airport 20 minutes before 11, which was airtime. Our uh, film editors were still working down in the cocktail section of the BOAC flight editing and getting ready to get on the air. Well, we got that over to the studio and got it on the air at 11 o'clock. So that worked. In the meantime, we found that uh, our uh, Jimmy Stewart plane had, in effect, gotten to uh, Boston about 20 minutes ahead of the NBC plane. And so we went on that. However, later I learned that NBC had changed the rules and had decided to take the uh, uh, ABC CBC film, which was the whole coronation beginning to end, and run the whole thing instead of taking the foreshortened version that we were showing. So who won? Well. Uh, they were on the air first with the long three hours. We were on the air first with the cut down one hour. So we had the actual coronation scene on first and in effect made good on, on what we had promised. 